Hi everyone, welcome to Gemchem. Now today's video is on a new topic that is we are going to understand the symmetry in different inorganic molecules. And for that we have to know the different kinds of genuine operations present under different symmetry elements and each each video we are going to deal with different symmetries of different inorganic molecules. In this video we are going to deal with ammonia, BCl3 and water. So let us start. Now first which we are going to deal with is the different symmetry elements which we have already done in similar kind of video under organic molecules. First is identity symmetry element where there is a rotation of 360 degree or 0 degree. So number of operations in this case possible is 1 only. Now when we talk about the proper axis of symmetry there is a number of axis of symmetry depending on the angle in which you are rotating and n is the number of axes present. So the number of operations possible in this case is n minus 1. If we talk about the plane of symmetry here reflection is being considered and the number of operations under this is 1. For improper axis of symmetry there is a commutation between the Cn and sigma h. So here the operation depends on number of genuine operations that can be present. If we consider the center of symmetry then in this case we have only one operation under it. Now in the next slide we are going to deal with the different kind of genuine operations that can be present under the symmetry element of S4. So when we are talking about S4 we can write it as S4 and if we have performed the S4 4 times we again get our identity symmetry element which is E. If we consider S4 1 then we have C4 1 into sigma. So what happens is that if you take a point here and if you rotate it by 90 degree and then reflect it back then what happens is that C here you have the point here first suppose you have reflected it then you have taken it to the 90 degree by rotation so it has obtained a new position right now so s41 is also considered as a genuine operation now if we consider the next one that is s43 this is considered as c43 into sigma 3 sigma 3 is equivalent to sigma 2 into sigma 1. So when we are breaking it as c4 3 into sigma 2 into sigma the sigma 2 is equivalent to 1 same operation. So we can write it as sigma as 1 time and c4 3. So this is also a genuine operation in this case. The last one which we are left with is S42. So let us try it. When we consider S42, then it is C42 into sigma2. And we have already seen sigma2 refers to E, right? And C42 refers to C21. That is, if you are rotating a molecule two times by 90 degree, it is equal to rotation of a molecule one time by 180 degree. So it becomes equivalent to C21. So we can consider that S4 is not a genuine operation. From here only we can understand that S41, S43 is the genuine operation. Whereas S42 is not a genuine operation. From here we can easily conclude that for SNN where N is an even number, number of operations is n by 2. Now if we go for the next one, if we want to see the genuine operations under S3, let us start doing. So S3, 1. What will be this one? C3, 1 into sigma. This is a genuine operation. If we go for S3, 2. This is C3, 2 into sigma, 2. This becomes C3, 2 into E and equivalent to C32. So not a genuine operation. Similarly, if we try for S33, then it becomes C33 into C33. 
sigma 3. Sigma 3 is equivalent to sigma and C33 is equivalent to E. So this becomes sigma. This is also not a genuine operation. If we go for C34, S34, then it becomes C34 into sigma 4. This is equivalent to C34 into E. 34 actually is rotation by 3 times 120 degree. So this becomes equal to 1 time 120 degree. So here we can write it as C31. This is also not a genuine operation. Now if we do S35 then it becomes C35 into sigma 5 which is equals to sigma and this is equivalent to C32 into sigma and C32 into sigma is also a genuine operation. Last one which we are going to try is S3 last one which we are going to try is S36. So in this case we have C36 into sigma 6 which is equals to E. So this also is not a genuine operation. So from here we can conclude that when n is even in number, number of operations for s is n by 2. When n is odd in number, then the number of operations is n minus 1. Now we will go directly to the ways in which we can find out the symmetry element. So first in case of ammonia, since it is present in a tetrahedral structure when the upper part is replaced by a lone pair. So if you rotate it three times by 120 degree, then you can get the similar structures where if you can see in the original molecule, there is no difference between the hydrogens. So it has C3 axis and the number of C3 axis present is 2 because C33 gives away the original molecule back. So let us see next symmetry element which is present in NH3 is our sigma where sigma is passing along with the C3 axis. So one sigma is passing through if we draw it like this NH here we have H and here we have another H one sigma is going to pass through this one and if it is passing through this one it will divide this and this. Similarly another sigma will pass through this hydrogen so it will reflect these two and the last sigma which is going to pass through is through this one through this back hydrogen. So it will reflect this hydrogen and this hydrogen. So we have 3 sigma v. So what are the total symmetry elements present here? We can write it down as first we have 1 e. So this has one operation. We have c3 where c3 1 and c3 2 is possible and the last one is sigma v which is 3 in number. So for this case, we can write ammonia, a point group of C3V. Now C comes from the principal axis, which is C3. And V comes from the sigma V. So the point group of ammonia is C3V. The next molecule which we are going to deal with is BCl3. Similar to ammonia, BCl3 has three atoms attached to it, but it is trigonal planar in nature. It will similarly have the C3 axis, but in this case, the sigmas will change. If you consider along with C3, there will be C2 axis. If you consider this, if you try to rotate it by 180 degree, then this chlorine will come here and this chlorine will come back to this side. The molecule which we are getting is similar in nature. So there are three C2s for the three chlorine present here. Next one we will see the sigmas which are present here. So one sigma passes through this one. This is one of the sigma v's. Another sigma passes through this one 
and this is also a sigma v. Another one will pass through the chlorine which is present in front. So here the sigma v will divide this chlorine and this chlorine. Next one which we will see is sigma h. So sigma h is that symmetry element which is perpendicular to the principal axis and we know that this is the principal axis present here which is C3. So sigma h will be present here. This is the plane which is denoted as sigma h which is dividing the molecule into two equal halves. And the last operation which is possible in this case is S3. If you try to move it by 120 degree and then reflect you will get back the same molecule and you will have the symmetry element S3. So if we try to summarize we can write down as this is C3, this is C2, we have sigma V, we have sigma H and the total symmetry elements are represented in this diagram. Let us write down the different elements present. First we have E, right? We have the E symmetry element. Next we have C3. C3 is represented by C3 1, C3 2. We have C2 which are perpendicular C2s to C3. So we have 3 C2s. We have sigma V which are 3 in number. We also have sigma H which is 1 in number and we have S3 as you have already seen in the previous slides S3 have two genuine operation one is S3 1 another is S3 5. Now in the next slide we will see our last molecule for today's discussion that is water. So water is one of the easiest one so you have for water C2 axis and C2 axis passes through this part. If you rotate it by 180 degree then you can see that hydrogens will change position but the molecule will look similar. You have a sigma V. Sigma V passes through one in the molecular plane another in between that is within the two hydrogens. So we have two sigma v's. One is this one, another is this one. And the last one which is always present is identity element. So let us write down the symmetry element and symmetry operations. First we have E, one operation. We have C2, one operation. We have sigma v which are two in number. So here ends the today's topic. In the next video, we are going to deal with the genuine operations of S5 and also the molecules for which we will determine the symmetry elements will be PCL5, IF7 and B286. Hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe and comment.